Welcome to our video series, The Startup Journey. We all admire the success of a startup, but behind it lies a lot of hard work and sacrifices by the founder, especially if they are building for the Bharat segment or the low and moderate income segment. In this series, we will hear about founders' journey, their challenges and aspirations and much more. All of these startups have been supported by Financial Inclusion Lab, an accelerator program incubated with CIE Co and supported by Microsafe Consulting. You can know more about these startups by clicking the link in the description below. So to begin, uh, please tell your name and the name of your startup. Hey, hi Nishant. Uh, I'm Vikram uh, from Funfina. So I'm one of the co-founders at Funfina. And uh, what does Funfina do? So primarily, we are an embedded finance full stack marketplace, wherein we are on one side, on the demand side of the network, we are trying to solve for lending program for OEMs or enterprises. Right. And on the supply side, what we are trying to do is provide them entire underwriting plus operations plus collections, distribution, etc. to the supply side of the network. So that's what Funfina does at a high level. And we provide capability to do things like daily collections, manufacture newer products, specifically focused for nano and micro retailers, whom we are generating this entire credit products for. Okay, uh, Bikram, just for the audience, can you define what who is a nano and micro uh, entrepreneur? Sure. So, so when we talk about these nano and micro entrepreneur, you think of. Uh, a Kirana store or a stationery store or a pharmacy or think of a mobile store. Now they could be doing anywhere between say 1 lakh per month to maybe say 1.5 CR kind of thing. So the range is very high if you go purely by MSEs, um, I'm saying uh, Ministry of Small Industries. So the definition is very very broad but yeah so that's what constitutes your micro and nano and if you look from overall when we talk about the 65 million of uh, micro and SME kind of a market they constitute probably 90 percent of the entire base like right. we're talking about so Vikram that's a huge base we are talking about um, every nook and corner shop around your home right right, right. That, that's, that's a very big base right? correct correct so so just curious um, what triggered you to start uh, this startup and what was the initial motivation for you? So, so I'll just take a step back before I started this startup, right? So what was happening was I was working in offline payment space in India, wherein uh, obviously if you talk about a lot of these offline payment non-bank companies, they are solving for a lot of corporates, right? But what we also try to do is create programs for retailers as such which are not part of a bigger corporate house and there you start selling these payment machines to individual retailers okay. right so that was one thing wherein then i started going to different parts of the country kochi uh, amritsar uh, go to nanital indore and all and then uh, while doing this my next stint luckily was as a follow up was more to build entire stack for nano and micro retailers in terms of doing things like okay procurement inventory management etc etc mm. now while i was doing this i i came to a conclusion probably i'm jumping the gun mm -hmm. and trying to solve for a problem which right now according to that retailer is not a problem okay, okay. the retailer's problem was how do i grow this business so it's like a startup right okay should i put in all the systems first and then grow the market or i build the market and then I'll build all these elements which are enabling from efficiency perspective and speed perspective etc and that's when we started talking about okay how do we go deep and solve these credit problems for these retailers and grow their businesses and then start providing other services that I'm talking about right so that right. was the genesis right uh, that's interesting and you have also linked it with your previous job. Can you just explain a little bit more your journey before you started Funfina? Sure. So uh, I have been all through in 
companies which are providing solutions for financial services companies right okay. so i uh, we when we started obviously we never used to call it fintech per se uh and so it was starting with internet banking core banking then b2b payments and while doing all that uh, there was a time when i was building product wherein it was a totally new protocol definition so if you have heard of swift right. wherein right. it's a interbank communication engine so swift was moving to a totally internet based protocol and luckily we got a chance to co-create it with one of the largest banks in the world and the best part was at that time there were no industry experts on that particular protocol even if you googled google was responding saying can you refine your query okay. right so so we worked with swift in defining those protocols and building that and so 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 that was like my entire tech deep tech understanding and how these financial messages etc travel and next it was getting more into data so with the entire financial messaging and everything coming in then the idea was okay when you are doing payments financial messaging now the bigger data problem started coming in mm-hmm. and i was building these collection solutions for geographies i would say not india for australia for us which is a huge data intensive kind of application if it runs horizontally across different banking verticals right and subsequent to that i was working on a personal finance wellness kind of a solution which again is like a leap over that data because now you are saying okay get not only banking data your insurance wealth etc etc now create a personal financial uh, profile of a customer mm-hmm. so so i had a lot of these data intensive uh, exposures and that's when i thought given all that i had not done anything from indian ecosystem perspective and i started my journey with offline payments and as i started doing that i think luckily one to second experience and then this understanding that okay what are the white spaces in the market led to funding so this is your first entrepreneurial journey yes it is and uh, just to add to that all the experiences that i spoke about so i would say most of them were zero to one products so in all these companies i was kind of on my own but the good part with bigger companies is you have got rates so that's there but luckily right from my first job i was given a small team and we were told okay now you have to build this business so which kind of gave us that flexibility if you were to say wherein you are not guided by okay already these are the targets this is what you have now suddenly you have nowhere to go you are being asked to set targets build on it and identify markets identify even like we were supposed to figure out who will be your sales guy mm-hmm. with the available sales team because first of all you are trying to sell to the sales guy who will agree whether i will sell your product or not right so so those were the journeys which helped me and if you talk about a fully blown on your own i would say funfina was my first i mean i would say the nature of uh, your job was entrepreneur but of course with some comfort and buffer of uh, working with a company correct because correct. your salary is secured by the way exactly <laughs> exactly exactly right okay that's interesting uh when so when you transitioned as a founder of funfina when did you say that you know you realized that you know this is this is it this is what i was meant to do i don't know if you have found your calling but if it is then what was your inflection point so i wouldn't say i have still hit that point wherein i can say that okay this is it okay the the <clears throat> when you say inflection point right it's like you have identified a problem okay now as you go deep what happens is when you have a lot of assumptions when you start as you go deep some of those assumptions get kind of debunked as in okay this is even harder problem to solve what you were trying to think from outside right so so those kind of things come in now when you talk about inflection point as an entrepreneur i'm not sure i have a good answer to that <laughs> question but i would say this whole idea of problem solving okay the whole idea of getting into that kind of business thinking because the number of problems that you will be thrown mm-hmm. 
on to you as an entrepreneur or as a founder or let's say even if you think from a bigger company when you're on your own right it's a very difficult situation but the question is are you enjoying it right or you want to say that ah, i'm done with it i wish i had uh, 15 more people to solve this problem so so that's what i would say as an i enjoy that being in those kind of situations wherein you are trying to figure out maybe you don't succeed all the time you fail rather you fail lot many times and there are few successes but yeah that's that's what it is okay so uh, uh, vikram you have transition from a corporate job with a secured income to a co-founder of pantheon all right like right? how has it impacted your personal life both positive and negative if it has it has it does it's okay i i don't think uh, any entrepreneur <laughs> would say that and now uh, so in a positive way i would say a lot of things uh, which you were not maybe focusing on or you were trying to kind of take it as saying that okay chalta hai ho jayega etc etc has changed a lot because one thing that you learn is to live in constraints right mm-hmm. like i'll give you an anecdote as in i was when we were starting this and i had to integrate uh, one of these crm tools okay we got 75% discount on a yearly basis etc even after that after that discount the amount that i had to pay was kind of equivalent to what we used to kind of spend on one dinner okay as part of that a bigger corporate so now suddenly i started thinking imagine those dinners with how many things that you could have built at a startup right so suddenly that was like a eye opener right and so so that is what starts happening as in you start figuring out a lot of solutions and at every point you start doing that cost benefit analysis right? right because people suddenly say that okay you should not build everything on your own there are so many tools etc etc so every time you have to think okay i'll use it for two months if i'm hitting a certain threshold you have to build on your own right so so that's what you start thinking and probably that starts happening in your personal life also like a lot of times you think that okay do i need to spend time on this etc etc <laughs> but then over a period you say no now it has to be in house no more outsourced right so so that happens the other big thing that happens is your ego okay because when you are working for a big company and lot of things you have lot of inhibitions right and i always feel that you should always be part of you should have a sales team stint in any damn company that you are because that also breaks all your ego boxes that you are in and especially startups break that because you start doing cold emails cold calling hitting everyone on linkedin without caring what this guy will say not say etc etc because earlier you are always worried about i should get a positive response here what happens is you start losing out are maximum the guy is going to say no stay with it right so so that happens and the third bit i would say is the decision making lot of times when you earlier try to say that okay x will take it y will take it now you have to take it right so you suddenly start thinking in terms of that reversible versus irreversible kind of models if it is reversible take it okay right, right. if something goes wrong we'll come back if it is irreversible okay put some more time so so that kind of prioritization i think and all these things i think suddenly they start coming in your personal life also in lot of decisions that you take on a day to day basis whether your kids going to school you want to do this i let them go and try all the sports that they want to do right now after a while they will say okay i don't like this rather than putting your own opinion and say that no 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 i think this probably no all that has been debunked what you think is what you think basically people don't think that way right, right. so so those are the things i would say have changed a lot as in so yeah i i i completely sort of uh, get a sense of what you are saying but you know when you are trying to solve some of these issues and as you mentioned uh, in the startup uh, that is what you are doing you are trying to solve a problem at right. a scale right especially if you are a tech founder correct and that takes a team you cannot do everything no. alone 
uh, even though there are constraints, you have to build a team in order to succeed. Correct. So can you share some of your experience of building a team at a early stage startup, right from early stage startup to where you are today? How did you sort of attracted right talent and how did you retain? So one of the things where I got kind of strength was this earlier experiences that I spoke about, wherein luckily I had experience of writing first line of code to selling it out in the market. Okay. So somewhere that fear, how will you write that first line of code was little lesser. Okay. And again, as a software engineer, what happens is when you start building things, right? You start with certain projections, right? Today, if I'm building something, you cannot say that, okay, I will build for what it will happen five years down the line. So you have to get into that iterative mode every time. And I took that same principle that, okay, if I am doing X business, I have to take it to 5x right now. What will it take to do it? Right? Now, there again, my thing is think of those choking points because you cannot think of all the choking points when you start, right? So you start, you know, these are the things you don't have. Probably you try to fill those voids. And as a founder, you have to fill in everything, right? Whatever, whether you know it, you don't know it at times, or maybe beg, borrow, steal. You have friends, you have network, etc. Two days, three days, whatever it is. Get people, get to know, talk to them about your problems. And the good part is people help. Right? It's not that, it's again our problem wherein we want to go back and say that, will they help or not? If you reach out, people do help, right? So, so exactly that bit, as an in initial days, don't think of, okay, I'll have, I'll have a team of 50 or 70 or something like that. Initially, uh, put a number to it that I'll have a team of X or Y, right? Mm. I think that has to happen over a period of time as you are able to prove that, okay, a business can become viable and it can expand because you have a lot of constraints when you start, right? You don't have enough money to pay. You are actually trying to convince people on the thing that you are convinced, right? So you are selling a dream what it can happen. So again, at that point of time, given what is happening around, you are getting compared with, okay, X, Y, the uh, compensation, if you are talking about in different geographies of India, they are very different, right? Now, so again, people start comparing with you, with them. For for them, it doesn't matter, right? They are looking for, so you have to find out people who are a good balance in terms of who are very ambitious because I would say higher ambitious people because only they will allow you to cross that bar. Otherwise, what will happen is if you are just getting people to follow you, it becomes even more difficult because then you have to not only pay, also you have to spend a lot of time, right? right? So, so I think that's the balance that you have to strike. And again, I have moved away from that 2080 principle and I'm saying now it's 595 principle. Which is? Like you have 5% of the people who actually set goals and do things right. and then you have 95% of the people who follow, right? So this 2080, I have not seen that happening at least in startup world, right? And might be true in bigger companies also, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, so, so hire those 5% of the people who are really good, who are really better than what you can do and then they will bring along people as well, right? So, so it's it's difficult job. It's like selling your dream, convincing them what this can happen. And that's how you build as an, as you keep on choking, then you figure out, okay, now you're not able to scale it. Get people for this, get people for that. And, but I guess whatever was there, every year things are happening, new thing happening as in with the entire generative AI, etc, etc coming in now, maybe some of the jobs wherein you were looking for people, now you can run with a lot thinner team as right. compared to what you were looking for, right? right. So, right. so yeah, there are like a lot of these things which are coming and helping you also as an entrepreneur, where you can really build that low cost model to scale. Right. Oh, because this is interesting what you have mentioned about regenerative AI and I will not connect it directly with the firing of uh, which many startups do, right? But that's a, 
you know, that's always seen in a negative light, right? But I think it's always a matter of priority, right? The, the, the product line may have changed, right? The, there might be a new technology which have rendered the team uh, not, not required, right? So how do you, um, where do you see a startup's role uh, in, in doing when this hiring and firing and this sort of news happen? So, so I have a contrarian view to this, right? So I am thinking like now what generative AI is giving you is a, giving you a good base. Right. Okay. So I'll give you another example. So I created a cold email for whatever we are building using chat GPT. I send it to my marketing person. The response that comes is, oh, I, we like it. I said, now imagine 100% of the world is writing same thing. So mm. now your job is tougher because you have to think what is going to be your differentiation right. because now the denominator is same. Right. Everyone can do this even without hiring marketing or this information. So now the job is tougher because you have to do more thinking. What this can give you is a good starting point. Mm. Right? Mm. So I'm not sure as in jobs, etc, etc will go. I think that time will tell right now it's huge initial excitement okay and we have to figure out a lot of use cases right right, right. now i don't think we have figured out those use cases how they are going to help in long term how that will happen because we have seen with lot many technologies let's not go there wherein the initial excitement is too much hmm. but over a period it phases out right, right. so let's so see. my question was a little deeper in the sense that how do you differentiate between, say, hiring and firing, say, for a corporate versus for a startup? Do you, do you think that uh, there is a fundamental difference in the way you should approach people uh, for a startup? So I, I would say a lot of it has taken in a very, very negative light in terms of when, uh, say, certain startup is firing and doing things, etc. So, so generally what happens in a startup journey, right? You start with certain assumptions. You might have got some funding. You are thinking of experimenting on a particular new geography because based on the whatever insight that you have got for the current one, you want to expand. Now suddenly you are hitting those roadblocks, right? right. And that happens in a bigger company. As in, if you think of bigger corporates, so here the problem is. So I would put it in two. One is the territorial problems, wherein okay, we don't think we can do these kind of businesses anymore given all the constraints now you cannot manage those kind of teams, right? So now it works both ways for the company and for the people who are working there, they better get better options wherein they can excel rather than just dragging on something which now even the founding team is not very sure they will be able to build it, right? right. So I think, and, and that happens with every big company. But what happens is every startup founder or everyone has looked in a very, very bad color that, okay, you went for insane growth or et cetera, et cetera. But again, it's very, very contextual, right? At that point of time, that was the insight you started with. And we put a negative color to it, right? I don't think any founder in a proper state of mind would want to do it until unless they hit those kind of because see India versus other geographies we are not living in a world wherein you have a lot of patient capital your investors are very patient and say that okay you keep on building and we'll wait for something to happen right and especially for smaller and smaller companies so so I I, I wouldn't say that hiring and firing is something which everyone does out of a choice okay you get into that situation, maybe wrong decisions, that happens. And right. I am I am 100% sure as in no one can foresee what is going to happen in future, right? right? right. So say for example, things are, that have been changing in fintech world in India, right? Mm. What RBI was saying maybe six months down has changed suddenly overnight, things change. So, so there are a lot of these macro events happen, change, and which will now influence whatever decision you are taking. Right? Understood. So uh, Vikram, uh, you have been part of Financial Inclusion Lab, uh, which is run by CIE, CIE right. Co, supported by Microsoft Consulting. What has been your experience? Uh, what, what support did you get from it? 
so <clears throat> so okay so we have been part of this uh, so i just wanted to add that we also applied a year back right. okay we didn't get through then we applied next year again uh, we went there right and our thing was given the segment that we are going after it's also very important who are you trying to partner with mm-hmm. right and that's where we thought cia is a better fit for us rather than going to any accelerator program because yeah there are a lot of these frills that you get in a lot of accelerator programs and again you have like good set of operators uh, with certain lot of these accelerators or investors uh, but we were looking for segment specific thing wherein now you have uh, operators you have investors and also academia, academia right. which is coming in which is providing you lot of insights right which was different in cii given the segment that we wanted to operate it's not easy to get all those market insights and everything because india is a very very vast market right, right. and kind of problems also that we are trying to solve is very difficult and then on top of that then getting access to microsafe consulting right mm. uh, and i would say for us what happened was microsafe consulting was working as an extended arm for funfina and doing lot of these research products and the good part there is i would say rather than it just becoming a consulting study there were a lot of ctas from those studies right which helps a founder a, a, a lot because now you can make things actionable rather than okay we have done the study these are like five matrix etc etc now you figure out mm-hmm. so so those were things i think are very very different which ci is doing and has helped us a lot so so yeah that's my right. thing right right so uh, <clears throat> become uh, my next question is for many uh, entrepreneurs who want to start in this segment mm-hmm. okay uh, what would be your uh, key lessons for them so i would say one is think very deeply why you want to do it okay uh, <clears throat> because that answer to why is very important why you are trying to jump into that because at times i also feel that this entire media created and everything created wherein okay if you become an entrepreneur or something like that it's at times overrated okay it's again if you think from it it's a job that you are doing okay uh, you get into a particular problem area you want to solve it it's only what has removed is some of these corporate constraints and guardrails have gone in and you are on your own so so even if you are on a in a bigger company you are getting to do some of these things do it but now when you talk specifically for a segment right mm. what do you need to do a think from challenges right it's not going to be so easy given india there are a lot of structural problems right so you have to think how do i partner a lot with different kind of providers in this particular ecosystem because india is 30 states think of how fmcg companies have approached this market they have approached each state differently mm. rather than saying one size fits all across india i'll create a plan right. right so you have to take and create that playbook one by one and start expanding so those are a lot of those kind of thought processes and uh, problem areas also you need to start thinking when you think from this particular segment otherwise what happens is you jump into it and suddenly oh we never realize that okay these are the structural problems so talk to as many people as you can who are in this segment why things didn't work the problem is everyone goes to people who are successful right, okay right. and statistically that number is very low True. so i would suggest go to lot many people who were not able to scale today when i talk to vcs lot many people say that msme area is where an area where lot many companies didn't scale and my question is can you tell me why what has been your insight why they didn't scale because right. yes all of us know it didn't scale so figuring out those answers are very important as a few people who have scaled built might give you one good reason why they scaled but you can't copy that true okay, right true, as true. is so so yeah so be noble be open minded be open minded yeah, yeah, yeah and and be very objective, objective about it as in don't get emotional hmm. i would say because as a product guy i would say one thing that i learned over a period is 
don't get too emotional with what you are building and what you have done because a lot of times it will be a throw away right so get into that mode if it works i'll take it if it is not be open to say that okay it's a throw away otherwise the moment you become so emotional you try to make it success come what may mm. and that becomes a deterrent for your growth right and i think there is a very fine line of course this segment requires empathy correct but at the not at the cost of a sustainable business model exactly right. exactly so uh, vikram um, uh, can you also highlight some of your learnings as an entrepreneur when you had started and till date so <clears throat> so my learnings if i were to talk about this segment right i would say a lot of times we assume that so a don't put a standard color to every segment okay there are a lot of micro segments in whatever segment that you are talking about and you have to go deeper and deeper to find out those micro segments right you might not be able to create a product which initially looks like a bigger segment but you have to find out that uh, stack of the right segment where this product works or will not work right mm. so so i think that was my biggest learning that there's no single product right. wherein you can fit it across so you have to go look at data deeper and deeper figure out what and i would say don't waste too much time on what is not working okay mm. maybe double down on what is working get more and more people or to say market which is similar to this Right. is showing those kind of attributes and try to expand a lot of times what happens is we go on that side of this is not working that is not working etc etc hence the model is wrong probably what is working and digging deeper why is that working right because a lot of times if it has worked it has worked probably the question should be why it worked right, right. and that helps you in expanding that because then maybe you can build it for the next segment mm -hmm. so i think that was a very very important learning right uh, as a entrepreneur in this particular segment if i were to say but from so this is from the customer perspective what about say raising fund um, sustaining businesses there are other dimensions to a startup right so yeah so so again if you look for this particular segment you are building for this particular product what happens is it needs patient capital okay it's not a market wherein when you are talking about when you sp split it into india 1 india 2 which is like a creamy segment or a layer that you are talking about this segment will take time to build so you have to identify those investors who are there for your long term and also understand the segment right because see today what happens is at end of the day revenue becomes your north star which actually is not your north star from mm -hmm. a startup's perspective mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. as in how many customers have you brought into the fold how that is changing things how you can expand on that as in so whether you start growing vertically breadth etc so i think lot of that has to happen within the founding team agreement alignment there okay because lot of times after a while that becomes a bigger problem wherein suddenly one of those will say no no i don't think this is the right segment we made a mistake etc etc so so that is one thing that you always have to keep in mind how do you manage that investors as i said as in who are those longer term investors because when you say purely from impact funds right the color of investment also changes right right, right. and also i would say when you are talking of this particular segment just because something is happening on the consumer space doesn't mean same thing will happen here right right so the way the behavioral patterns of this particular segment is very different from a consumer consumer segment right so you have to use lot of that also while building your business rather than simply putting same color to anything and everything right i think that's very very important <clears throat> and uh, sorry uh, you said investors yeah cetera. other dimensions of the startup uh, be it team also team. i would say team also right it's very important because lot of times when you are hiring people right 
they are interested in a particular segment as an oh if we were to do this in segment probably the growth would have been faster etc etc but what you have to do is make your team talk to a lot of these people right right, right. right now that is also something missing so i make it a point be it my marketing guy at times engineering folks also mm. why don't you be on support calls so i remember my marketing guy coming back to me and saying bikram why don't we focus on this segment that segment for 5 days i gave him a list and i said you go and speak to this guy right after first day he says bikram in rajasthan how will that guy travel 20 kilometers to go to bank and do things why can't we solve for him so that's what the change is when they actually see things happening that's probably when this trigger point comes okay we should be solving for that right so i think you have to throw your people in all those insights etc that you are getting because motivating team is biggest challenge you can have your investors and everything but for this segment given the peer pressure that these guys are around you also have to motivate them why this particular segment okay so i think i agree with you bikram uh, i think team alignment and motivation for the team uh, is the core and what i am hearing is bring customer at the center so that everybody all the stakeholders are looking at the center and that will automatically bring the alignment and motivation true true yeah. okay so uh, vikram uh, what is your motivation because there are 100 issues i keep talking to you i know that on a regular basis this thing that thing keep breaking down right and and it is not always your job to fix it but ultimately the responsibility lies with you right, right? Yep. so how do you keep yourself motivated uh, other co-founders keep themselves motivated in your team and to scale up the, your organization i would say with whatever longer term goals that you set right as a company and with all the stakeholders it's very important to set up those weekly monthly goals as well lot many short term goals right because those are kind of things which as you keep on crossing 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 it will have a compounding effect mm-hmm. right rather than just focusing on that end of year goal or something like that so i think you need to slice and dice and make it very very shorter term it could be i wouldn't go to daily okay but you should definitely have these weekly monthly goals and how you are jumping because as you rightly said things will break okay mm-hmm. every other day new thing will break etc it will happen but what you need to figure out is in longer scheme of things these are like smaller problems you live with don't try to solve every problem right right, right. solve problems which are really as an so a lot of times internally we start talking about everything is like priority da 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 everything and we say that okay eventually bang for a buck right, <laughs> right. if i solve this right. is it going to give me that bang right. right and same thing goes from engineering perspective as in so many problems what is the impact of a particular issue that you have found out if mm. it's a bigger problem all hands on deck you have to solve it right now right so so i would say that's that's what happens as in from a motivation perspective yes when customers start coming back to you again and again that suddenly gives you lot of that adrenaline rush to say that okay there is something in it as in the moment you stop something people are coming back when why not this month etc etc then you start feeling okay you are building something which people like and if you take it out people are worried about right mm-hmm. so i think some of these things uh, kind of keep you pushing to figure out okay how do you do that how do you solve and as i said lot of times these problems that are coming across right they automatically become good drivers also right. as in why this is happening how do you solve that and if you have got good team of engineers who are not constrained by okay we don't know how this will happen or or let's say okay leave it to me we will figure out as in 
so maybe get those kind of people around wherein the moment you give something and you ask people how will you do this if the answer comes don't worry we will figure out okay right. so i think that kind of gives you good motivation wherein okay now you have to build something for these guys also which keeps them involved and feels like okay they are contributing to whatever we are doing right uh, uh, yeah so what i'm hearing is uh, whether the problem that you are solving whether yes. that excites the customer or not exactly right exactly. and i think that's the best way to figure it out is take the solution away and see the response of the customer right for exactly. whatever reason if, if the things are breaking down and customers are complaining that's a good thing true right? true true <laughs> exactly right and of course the team uh, ultimately uh, they are a customer for you right very true. internal very customer true. for you yes. right so how yes. do they get satisfied Correct. whether by solving or throwing a very difficult problem at them or keep your Correct. expectations keeping your expectation up and up and up exactly. as you grow and that I'm, I'm i'm sure that also allows your team member to grow yes. as you grow yes. as a company Correct. Right. Correct. yeah because designation etc etc is yeah. something but eventually all of them at the end of the day feel like okay what am i leaving the day with right. as in did i do something interesting probably i think that's although we are getting into no no i i get it maybe maybe that's the folks that get attracted to the startup in the first place exactly who are not worried about their designation correct and who are more uh, inclined towards solving a problem right. rather than worrying about their designation true right. true it was a pleasure talking to you vikram i hope that uh, the discussions that we had the learning that you shared uh, will help many uh, future entrepreneurs especially those who want to start their journey in this uh, solving for uh, the bharat segment what we call right True. 80% of india right <laughs> probably <laughs> maybe, yes maybe more, maybe than, more, than, more than, than that, that. <laughs> right yeah so it was great talking to you thanks thank thanks nishan thanks for inviting us thank you thanks.